My name is David McDonald. I uh, live in Syracuse, New York. I uh, taught ceramics at Syracuse University from uh, 1971 until uh, 2008. I uh, grew up in Hackensack, New Jersey, uh, the northeastern part of, of the state, right across the Hudson from Manhattan. I, uh, in high school, I was on the track and cross country team, and that enabled me to get a athletic scholarship to Hampton University in Virginia, where I started out uh, planning to be a painter, uh, but then my advisor suggested that I uh, change from the fine arts curriculum to the uh, art education curriculum. And when I did that, one of the required courses that I had to take was ceramics. And so I took the ceramics class, fell in love with it, and uh, the rest, so to speak, is history. Uh, I studied with uh, Mr. Joseph Gilliard, who was very knowledgeable and very generous uh, with in information and, and nurturing my interest in ceramics. Once I graduated from uh, Hampton uh, with a BS in art education, I uh, matriculated for a semester at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst and then transferred to the University of Michigan uh, where I received my Master of Fine Arts degree uh, in uh, the spring of 1971. I, there I studied with uh, Robert Stull. Uh, I should mention that both Mr. Gilead and, and Professor Stull were, birth, were both African Americans. And at that particular time, there weren't many African Americans in ceramics, the teaching on the university level. So I was quite fortunate to be able to study with two outstanding African-American uh, ceramic artists. Uh, when I graduated from the, from the University of Michigan, I was hired by Syracuse University to teach ceramics there in the College of Visual and Performing Arts and the art school. And that's where I taught. Syracuse was my first and only job. Uh, I uh, taught primarily wheel throwing and all levels from introductory all the way up to a graduate level wheel throwing. Um, I think the fact that I was able to uh, teach at a major university and be exposed to a lot of resources and especially exposed to a lot of really talented people, both faculty and students uh, influenced my work quite a bit. It enabled me to have the kind of freedom to experiment and, and, and to pursue ideas that if I had followed my original um, desire to become a production potter, I probably wouldn't have had the time to explore. Uh, so I taught at Syracuse uh, towards the end of my uh, my tenure there, I discovered that I really enjoyed the teaching introductory classes more than the upper level classes uh, because I'd like being part of that aha moment when things finally start working for the student after many, many frustrating hours of trying to get this seemingly uh, um, uncontrollable material and process under control. And so during uh, my last six or seven years there, I taught primarily introductory level ceramics. Uh, my work uh, has always centered around the vessel. I uh, developed a very strong affinity to the vessel when I was in undergra undergraduate school at Mr. Gilead, who was an outstanding potter. And um, one of the things that I liked about uh, the vessel was the fact that you could take this material that has no intrinsic value and turn it into something that was both beautiful, but also uh, useful. And, and that notion of utility has, has been a constant in my work, although sometimes some of the 
larger scale things I make, uh, one might question the actual utility of them, but they're all uh, centered around the idea of the vessel. And uh, so early on um, in undergraduate school and graduate school and uh, some of my first years at uh, Syracuse, my work was primarily social commentary. Uh, although I would use the vessel as a vehicle, but the, the images and, and the messages that I was trying to communicate was about the predicament of the African-American in uh, American culture and some of the frustrations related to that. Uh, Somewhere around the mid, uh, mid to late 70s, I, I decided that I wanted my work to be m about more than just being a victim. And one of the things that I remembered from graduate school was that my professor Robert Stahl said, you know, David, you're uh, part of a long continuum, a, a heritage of art makers that go all the way back to Africa and, and in many instances predates art making in uh, other parts of the world. And so I decided at that point that I wanted my work to be more about my African heritage and less about my, my uh, victimhood in this Western culture. And so that's when I started investigating uh, various African cultures. Um, and uh, I would think maybe the first example of, of uh, my affinity to African art would be represented by my investigation of Nigerian pottery. And one of the things I liked about Nigerian pottery and, and later on about African arts in general was surface decoration. Um, the way that one can take a seemingly mundane and, and ordinary object and turn it into something that has a quality that is more than the sum of its parts, a quality of, of, of specialness, exceptionalness, or a quality of celebration and ceremony. And so um, as I started uh, veering my work in that direction, I started investigating other cultures in Africa and became uh, very interested in the way in which uh, various ethnic groups in Africa decorated things, uh, how the Maasai decorated their cattle how the Indibeli in South Africa, the women decorated themselves as well as the, uh, the architecture. Uh, and uh, so looking at various aspects of African culture has influenced my work. Um, I try not to pretend to make African art, but I, I try to use that sensibility. One of the things I like about African art and, and African decoration is that a seemingly very, very simple element repeated uh, in certain ways, you know, uh, creates uh, an image or a, uh, a view that's more than just the sum of its parts. And I think that, that that's probably, uh, part of the old, the idea of a pattern. Um, and that is, you know, you can take a very simple element and repeat it and certain things start to happen in, in, in relationship to your perception of the pattern itself, but also when applied to a three-dimensional form, how it changes or alters your perception of that form. And so my work is primarily about surface. Uh, early on, I was really very concerned about form and to some degree that I am, but I feel that now I just make pots to have a surface to decorate. Is that enough?
I can't I can't hear you.